Good morning, High Rock Church. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors in High Rock Church of Brookline, and it's so great to be able to gather with folks from different parts of the High Rock family and worship together. I'm so glad that you've joined us, and I hope that you're able to have a meaningful experience with us today. So at High Rock, we do seek to be a welcoming and safe space. And so wherever you are, whatever your faith background, age, ethnicity, gender, I want you to know that you are welcome here. And if you're new with us, a very special welcome to you. I know that the fall season brings a lot of new faces to the greater Boston area, uh, and we'd love to get to know you a little bit better and be able to connect. So I invite you to fill out a digital communication card. You can find the link for that in the description below, or just visit the respective High Rock Church that brought you here's website for more information on getting connected. For the kiddos, we're so glad that you're here with us as always. And I know sometimes it can be hard to understand and engage with what's happening in the service. And so as always, we do have some fun and creative ways for you to be participating. Uh, just ask your grown up to print off one of the Kids Rock at Home sheets that should have been uh, sent in the emails this past week. If you didn't get it or if you don't have a printer to print it out, that's okay. Here's something you can do. I want you to draw a picture for me. Draw a picture of how you can welcome someone that's new. Maybe it's a new classmate or maybe it's a new neighbor. How can you welcome them and help them to feel uh, like they belong? Now, friends, I invite you to join us in singing the call to worship. Let's sing. Oh, Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you. As the day rises up to meet the dawn, all glory to God, the Father, the Spirit, all glory.
Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Greetings again. This is the part of our service where we want to talk about some of what's happening in the lives of our churches. And today I'll be sharing a little bit about what we at Brookline are going to be focusing on in this season of our church. So Brookline folks, you should have received an email this past week uh, explaining all about it, but we're really going to be focusing on honing in on the building up of our community. It's one of the reasons why we're worshiping together with Haverhill and North Shore. Not only do we share in our commitments to racial justice, but being able to share resources and deepen our connection to more of the larger body of Christ is a blessing to us in this season. Uh, and it also affords Pastor Yumiko and I a little more capacity to focus on strengthening our local community. And so as mentioned in the email, we're encouraging you to participate in three sub-communities, small, mid-sized, and large. And that's going to be primarily through triad groups, ohana groups, and Sunday services. Now to find out more about this seasonal focus and also to sign up for a triad or ohana group, uh, you can find links to register in, on our website. Uh, also check your email that you have gotten or just feel free to let me or Pastor Yumiko know. We'll have other opportunities as well to connect and grow as a community, but please be sure to join a triad or an ohana group because that's gonna be a, a vital part of this season of our church. Now folks in North Shore, I, I know that you guys also have a similar focus on life groups in this season of your church, and so I believe they're starting up soon, and so please be sure to get plugged into one of those. Now as we continue our worship, uh, if you do call High Rock home, uh, whether it's in Haverhill, North Shore, or Brookline, we invite you to continue partnering with us in our mission to love and serve God and one another in our respective locales. And one of the ways that we do that is by continuing to give God's tithes and our offerings. For more information on how you can give and where to give, check the links below in the description or visit any of our websites. Now church, I invite you to stand as you're able uh, for the reading of God's word. Hi, I'm David Sim, and I'm worshiping with you from High Rock A Roll. Today's reading from the Word of God comes from James chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Please follow along in your own Bibles or listen as I read the scriptures. Once again, that's James chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Following the reading, I invite you to respond in worship with the singing of the doxology. Hear the Word of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and the poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who, I love, who love him? But you have dishonored the poor is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into, the, into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Let's sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hello, High Rock family. My name is Bryn, and I am one of the pastors at High Rock North Shore, and I'm so glad to be with you this morning. You know, the ancient rabbis had a saying. They said, scripture is like a jewel with 70 faces. So you have to keep turning it and turning it and turning it. And every time you do, every time you look at scripture from a different angle, you get a new perspective and you, and you learn something different than you knew before. And that's what our hope is for the Pass the Mic sermon series that we started. Last month, we shared that we are committed to hearing from other pastors, pastors of color, covenant pastors, who can share a different perspective than the one that we typically get on Sunday mornings. It's just another way that we can understand and learn about scripture uh, in a new way. And so this morning, I am thrilled to be able to introduce you to my friend, Pastor Gustavo Torres. Now, Pastor Gus is a pastor, an associate pastor at a Spanish-speaking congregation out in Chicago. He and I met a few years ago. We're part of a cohort together with our denomination, and I've gotten to know him pretty well, and my husband has gotten to spend some time with him, and Pastor Gus is actually my husband's favorite pastor in this cohort, and I'm in the cohort, so that's how awesome he is. <laughs> um, he is just one of the most vibrant and joyful and loving pastors that I have ever met. We were on an airplane together a, a few years ago, and he was in a couple seats ahead of me, and he came back to, to say hi, and he was like, this flight is so awesome. The guy next to me is a Spanish speaker, and he has all these questions about Jesus, so we're just talking about God. And I'm like, when I get in an airplane, I put on my headphones, and I'm like, no one talk to me. And Pastor Gus is like, let me tell the person who's sitting next to me all about Jesus. That's just who he is. He is so, so passionate about the gospel, and I have loved getting to know him and his heart for scripture and for Christ. One of the things I have admired most in my conversations with Pastor Gus is his ability to get to know a particular community and, and really see what the long-term needs are in that community. He's an electrical engineer, and so he thinks that way. Um, but he and I had a, a great conversation at an ice cream, shop, ice cream shop in Chicago last year, and, and he was telling me all about his community and some of the, the challenges that his community faces. But he wasn't just figuring out how to put a Band-Aid on those challenges. He was figuring out what long-term they could do to assist his community in, in changing those things long-term. And I've just really appreciated his mind thinking that way, and it's taught me to think in a different way. Uh, so I'm just so glad that you get to hear from him this morning. When I asked him to preach this morning, uh, he, he wrote back, and he was so excited, and he said, it is very funny and, increase, and interesting how the Holy Spirit works. For the past two weeks, I've been prompted to compile a preaching focusing on the unity of the church and humanity as a whole. Now I know why. Prior to reading your email, I was thinking about you and Aaron, and I busted out laughing as soon as I read your email. God was preparing me for this awesome opportunity that you were extending to me. So I'm so excited to introduce you to Pastor Gus, and here he is. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome, welcome to this space. It's truly a privilege for me to stand before you today. And I really and honestly want to give a huge thanks to Pastor Brenton Harrington for allowing me to be here among you today. I, I'm not at the temple, but I'm here in spirit. And I want to give her thanks for the opportunity of bringing the gospel to you. It's just, the opportunity of bringing the gospel to a different church, it's a huge responsibility. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank Pastor Britton. And I also want to thank the whole entire High Rock community. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm truly honored to be here. My name is Gustavo Torres. I am an associate pastor at Iglesia del Pacto 
Evangelico Peniel in the South East of Chicago from the Windy City. So we want to send you a big, big virtual hug from, from our church and receive this in the name of the Lord. Now, I want you to take this moment to truly focus on what God has to tell you through this message. I don't want this to be just another message. So if you have time, go ahead and get a pen and, and um, go get a pen and a notebook so you could take a couple of notes. I also want you to open your mind to most importantly, open your heart for the message that God has for all of us today. I want you to join me in prayer. Father God, thank you so very much for another day that you have given us. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to gather here, although we're not at a temple. We're all united by your Holy Spirit, God. Father, we thank you for the amazing blessings that you have prepared for today. Lord, we give you all honor. We give you all glory. May today's message truly touch our hearts and not just be words lost in space. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen and amen. Well, just like that, I want you to open your Bible and we're going to jump in right to today's reading. And since I can hear you, tap a big amen. All right. Today's reading will be in James 2, chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. A warning against prodigies. And the title of the message is The Social Implications of Faith. Taken straight from the Bible. Amen. Let's read. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who's poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Verse 5. Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom He promised to those who love Him? Verse 6. But you dishonor the poor. Isn't the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Verse 8, Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in scriptures. Pay attention to this and um, underline it. Love your neighbor as yourself. I'm going to go ahead and repeat it again. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Verse 9, but if you favor some people over others, are you, commit, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. Verse 10. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. For the same God who said, you must not commit adultery, also said, you must not murder. So if you murder someone, but do not commit adultery, you have still broken the law. Verse 12. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. Verse 13. Also, please go ahead and underline this right here. It says, there will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. I'm going to go ahead again and repeat it. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have but if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Amen. 
I have titled the first point of this preaching, get ready for this, a strong punch to the Christian stomach. <laughs> oh, let's go back to verse one. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? All right, tell me, how should I begin to explain this verse? It's a very tough one, isn't it? Brother and sister, friend who's listening to this message, it is impossible to call ourselves people of faith when we favor some people over others it is impossible to believe that we are true believers when deep inside of our hearts we dislike people that are different from us when we pray for some and we exclude others when we help those who we like but those that we don't like we just push them to the side. I want to ask you a question. When Christ was hanging from the cross, did he just slip a little note to the, guards, to the guards that were there saying, here's a little note. These are the people that I'm going to exclude from the merciful act of kindness and love that I'm doing for humanity right now. Did he do that? Of course not. Or maybe, I mean, or maybe I don't know about this, right? But as far as I know, he did not do that. He died for you and he died for me. He died for the entire humanity. But what do we like to do? We like to exclude people from what Jesus Christ did in the, cry, in the cross for you and for me. In the first verses of chapter 2 of James, we see that the congregation, the church itself, was excluding people and showing favor towards some. They treated rich people very, very well. All right? Gave them the best seat. But what did they do to the poor, to the poor people? Yeah, I mean, if there's a seat there, yeah, you know, take the seat. If not, you sit on the floor. This is very, very similar to what's happening in our society today. We favor some people over others. And that is why our society has the problems that we have today. Society likes to exclude people based on their social status, gender, color. Well, what could I say? We like to exclude people they are different than us. I want to make something very, very clear. We are all equal in front of God. God really wants, what God really wants is for us to have a true change of heart, a true love. For our neighbor. As a matter of fact, the letter of James was written to correct the false belief that a person could have faith without a true change of behavior and to give a practical instruction regarding the Christian life. There's so much that we can learn from this letter, but today I am focusing only on chapter 2. The second point that I have for today is, get ready for this one, please. Write it down. But more importantly, write it down in your heart. Second point is, we must love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We must love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Let's go back to verse 8 and 9. Verse 8. Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 9. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. 
you are breaking the law. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let's ask ourselves the following question. Do we really love our neighbor as we love ourselves? I ask again, do we really love our neighbor as we love ourselves? And truly, the question here is, do we love those who are not like us? Those who are different than us. Those who come from different backgrounds. Those who come from different beliefs. Those who are from different country, from a different social economic background. Those who are from a different place. Do we really and honestly have true love for those who are different than us? Only you and God know the answer to this question. For He knows the heart of men. Our culture is very individualistic. It teaches us to love ourselves more than others. The culture teaches that we should do everything and anything to be successful. Culture teaches us that as long as you are okay in your family, then who cares about the rest of the people? That as long as, as your family is safe and you're safe, forget about, <laughs> literally, your neighbor. Let me tell you something today. All divisions in our society, in our churches, in our schools, in our community have a single root for the problem. And that is that we do not love others. We don't love those who are different than us. We like to feel comfortable with people that look like us, with people that act like us, with people that have the same background than us. But we don't open up our love. We don't open up our circles to those who are different than us. Instead, what do we do? We judge. And we don't show the love of God. We, don't, we do not give space to those who did not grow in places like we did. We don't open up our lives to people who are not from the same place where we are. Now, we all want to change our society, but none of us want to change. This goes beyond religion. This goes beyond our beliefs. This goes beyond our culture. What we truly need to heal is a common love. A love that unites us. That love is called Jesus Christ. We need to acknowledge once again that He died for everyone. Not just for you, not just for me, for everyone. When He died in the cross, again, like I said earlier, He did not write a small letter and give it to the guards and say, I'm going to go ahead and exclude these people. So why is it that we, as a church, exclude individuals that are not like us? Why is it that we focus on what is good for us? We must focus on what's good, not only for us, but for everyone, and show the true love of Christ. Now, the third point for today's message is, it's a very difficult one. So prepare yourselves. It's very sensitive. Are you ready? Verse 13. There will be no, no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. I'm going to go ahead and repeat it. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But, huge but, if you have been merciful, God 
will be merciful when he judges you. Wow. We can clearly read here that we must show mercy to others. Clearly, it says it right here. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. We must love those who are different than us. We know that actions speak louder than words. Let's show through our actions the merciful and loving God that we all say we believe in. We say we believe in a powerful, loving God. Let's show through our actions that we actually believe in this lovable and merciful God. Extend love to others. Compassion, forgiveness. Open up the circle that Jesus Christ, open up the love that Jesus Christ, Christ has given you and has given me. Let's not be selfish with faith. Let's love. Let's expand the kingdom of God in this earth. This earth is dying. People are dying on a daily basis without feeling loved. We, as Christ followers, are called to love, not to judge. As it, said, as it says here in the, in the reading. Now, don't judge. Don't point fingers. I'm going to say it three times. Love, love, love. Another three. Love, love, love. If we want to see a change in our society, we must begin with our families first, with our churches, with our schools, in our community, and then we will have a better society, a better community. And it's very likely that we might just have a little bit more of peace if we change. It's up to us to change the way in which this society is going at the moment. Now, let's not longer dream. Let's no longer dream of peace in our country. Let's no longer dream of peace in the world. Let's take action and unite in true love. And that is God's love. I don't want to dream anymore. Do you want to continue to dream? No. Let's take action. So this world could change. So that we could change. So that our communities can change. In conclusion, I want to ask a set of questions. How would our society be different during these troubling times if we truly understood that fundamentally, no human is different from one another. That we are all equal in the eyes of God. That when Christ died in the cross for us, He died and rose again. He died and rose again for you, for me, for the entire world. Not just for some. Two. Second question, how can we practice true and genuine Christ-like love to our neighbor? The Bible calls us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We cannot call ourselves people of faith if we don't love each other. How can you put this word, including myself, how can we all put this word into practice, especially now, during during these troubling moments in our country? And it's not just the U.S. I was just preaching to a church in Colombia. 
violence is everywhere. Not just in the US. Discrimination is everywhere. Not just here. But it's up to you, it's up to me to change the course. Of where we are heading right now. Let's stop dreaming of a better church, a better community, a better country, a better society. Let's take action and show the world true and unconditional love. Amen, amen, and amen. Church, friend, God has called us to love one another. We need to take this word into action. Our families are being destroyed. Families are being separated for the lack of compassion. People are dying each day because there's no more love, respect, for human life. We must take action. Again, the title, and I didn't write this. This is, I took it from the Bible exactly how it is. The title of this message was The Social Implications of Faith. You and I have a social implication a social duty if we really want to call ourselves people of faith. I love you. I want to send you a big virtual hug. Everything's virtual now, so if I could, I would give you a big hug, but I can't. <laughs> um, a big hug. And now, let God bless us all with the following benediction that I would say in English, and I will say in Spanish. So please prepare your heart to receive this blessing. I'm going to give you give a few seconds. I want you to prepare. I want you to meditate. And when today's message. And I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready to receive this blessing. It's going to be first in English. And I'm also going to do it in Spanish. Ready? Amen. We abundantly receive God's mercy and love placed in our lives so that the peace of Jesus Christ may also be with us and that we can demonstrate the love, the mercy, the justice to our communities, to our church, to our country, and ultimately, the whole world. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm going to say this benediction in Spanish. If you don't know Spanish, just repeat it. <laughs> Recibimos abundantemente la misericordia y el amor de Dios puestos en nuestras vidas para que la paz de Jesucristo también esté con nosotros y que podamos demostrar el amor, la misericordia y justicia a nuestras comunidades, a nuestra iglesia, a nuestro país y en última instancia al mundo entero. Amén, amén y amén. Be blessed. Love you all.
Friends, it has been a joy to worship together with all of you. A final reminder to fill out the digital communication card, subscribe to our YouTube channels, and visit our website so you can stay up to date on what's happening. And North Shore folks, again, sign up for a life group. Brookline folks, sign up for a triad or ohana group. Now, church, would you receive the benediction from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. May the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow. May he, as a result, make your heart strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father when our Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.